Okay, so we have gone through um, the anatomy of the muscle cell um, and the whole muscle from biggest to smallest. And the, then we talked about myofibrils and myofilaments, uh, talked about the neuromuscular junction and the motor unit. So now let's get into how a muscle contracts. Okay, it's called the sliding filament model, and all has to, we're just going to kind of put everything together that we've talked about up to this point. Uh, so first and foremost, uh, in order to contract a muscle, we have to um, have an impulse come from a neuron. Uh, and that neuron basically gives us something called excitation. It's going to excite the muscle. It's going to send this wave of excitation across the sarcolemma uh, and into the sarcoplasmic reticulum that allows that contraction to occur. Okay, so... Something to keep in mind is the sarcoplasmic reticulum has a ton of positive calcium, uh, positive calcium ions inside of it, uh, and those positive calcium ions are the things that are going to allow muscle contraction to happen. Um, when that excitation reaches the cisterni, which is the things connected to those T-tubules, uh, it makes that the, the sarcoplasmic reticulum become permeable to that calcium, and that calcium diffuses into the to the sarcoplasm, and then it's going to uh, have this interaction with the troponin tropomyosin complex um, to allow cross bridges to attach. Okay, so looking at this slide, and I know that you guys are going to make fun of me because my slide does this, which is weird, uh, but follow along here. Okay, so I already talked about excitation, but looking at the sliding fil filament model. Okay, so. Uh, I'll just read it, then go through it. So sarcomere, the functional unit of the muscle, that's the thing that shortens. Um, so remember, I have thousands and thousands of sarcomeres stacked on top of each other. When each of those shorten, the whole muscle shortens. So we are going to release acetylcholine at the synaptic cleft. That acetylcholine is going to go across the synaptic cleft and uh, attach to the motor end plate of the muscle cell. And that is what is like plugging in um, a light, plugging in a lamp. When I do that, now I have this wave of excitation that's going to travel across the sarcolemma. Uh, and this is going to cause that change in the sarcomere. Uh, but a, a thing to keep in mind here, and, and again, we get this silly spinning thing, is that the filaments will not change shape. Uh, the myosin is going to be pulling on the actin, but um, when that... that interaction occurs, that's the thing that shortens the sarcomere. It's not that the actin itself is shortening or the myosin itself is shortened. Uh, it happens because the cross bridges contract and pull the actin towards the center of the sarcomere, and this causes the H zone and the I band to narrow or even disappear. Um, it's because they're the overlapping, we've got more overlapping between actin and myosin. That's why the I band is disappearing and the Z lines come cross closer together. And we use this stuff called AT, well, ATP, you know, uh, and then ATPase, uh, an enzyme that helps to break down ATP into ADP plus P or into adenosine diphosphate. So it looks a little bit like, uh, I might go through this one, okay? So, look at number one. I release um, acetylcholine. Acetylcholine travels across that synaptic cleft, and it connects to the motor end plate. Uh, when it, we do that, if you follow the arrows, um, that acetyl, well, excuse me, after that acetylcholine has um, connected, the, now the arrows are going to travel across the sarcolemma. Now, remember the T-tubules, and I showed you Star Wars and all that kind of stuff. The T-tubules allow that impulse to travel deep into the muscle cell and reach every uh, part of the the actin and myosin. So that impulse travels deep inside the T-tubules that then travels to the cisterni, which causes, that then travels to the sarcoplasmic reticulum. The sarcoplasmic reticulum is going to release calcium. That calcium is going to travel into the sarcolemma and then attach to the troponin tropomyosin complex. When that bond happens, that troponin tropomyosin complex shifts and we get that connection for the cross bridges to attach to the actin. We then go through something called the power stroke. Okay, 
So if you look at this picture on the bottom, that would be relaxed. At the top, you see contracted. Notice that when we contract, the H zone basically disappears because the actin is being pulled towards the M line. Okay? When we relax a muscle, it's the exact opposite. Okay? We have this enzyme called acetylcholinesterase. This is going to break down or decompose the acetylcholine in the synaptic cleft. Uh, and basically unplug the lamp. When we decompose that acetylcholine, um, everything goes in reverse. The calcium gets pumped, or excuse me, it detaches from the troponin tropomyosin complex, and that is going to shift back in place to cover the binding sites. Um, the calcium gets pumped back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum, uh, and we'd have basically turned off the electricity. Um, and that's when you relax your muscle. And again, all of this uh, is occurring every time we contract a muscle. And we want this acetylcholinesterase there because that's what prevents, and as you can see there on that, on that slide, it prevents continuous muscle contraction. If you've ever had a cramp, you know that a continuous muscle contraction can be very painful. Um, I'm just going to go back here, and I'm going to highlight these things. I'm sorry. There we go. Okay, so... Remember, neuron, neuron has axons. Axons are going to release acetylcholine across the synaptic cleft. And don't forget that every time, or excuse me, the motor unit is that neuron plus every muscle fiber contracts to. Contracts to. So if you remember, um, if, if it's connected to, a, if, if all these muscle fibers are connected to one neuron, then all those muscle fibers will contract and relax at the same exact time, okay? But also remember that your muscle is a combination of a bunch of motor units. So I have the neuromuscular junction where I release acetylcholine and notice that it will travel across that sarcolemma into the T-tubules and then that's when all the magic happens as we say with muscle contraction. And I think that's about it.